Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. It's nice to have you all here today. We've got a couple of quick announcements this morning. Um, I think it's next Sunday, August 22nd, we're going to be having a blessing of the backpacks in church here. So if you've got kids, uh, what we're going to do is have them bring their backpacks to church um, and kind of ask God to bless them in this year of school uh, and kind of have the community recognize uh, and also care for these kids who are part of our community. So that's kind of what's going on next week. Uh, we are having a baptism today. Yeah. It's exciting. I'm excited. Uh, so thank you all for being here and supporting her and her baptism. Um, we are going to be doing some things a little bit differently today than we have in the past. Um, we are finally getting back to communion how we used to do it. <laughs> so maybe we've forgotten how we used to do it. Uh, so here at Concordia, anybody is welcome to have communion. Uh, kids, adults, people who aren't Lutherans, anybody is welcome. And the reason we do that is because what Jesus has done on the cross is for all people. Uh, so what we eat and what we drink is God's love for us. And we say, and we recognize that what Jesus Christ has done is for me. Uh, so how we do that here when we're not using the little individual packets in the back deal is usually we start in the front, so you guys are going to be great today. It's going to be good. Uh, so when we're having communion, you guys can just come out into the center aisle. I'll be here handing out bread. We'll have someone else over here with a tray of wine or grape juice. Grape juice is in the middle. You can grab what you want, and then we've got little baskets on the ends of uh, where to put your cups. And seeing as everyone's on this side today, almost, you guys are great holding down the, the left side or the right side on your perspective. It's wonderful. Uh, I think we'll just use this side today. So, uh, so we'll just come up and kind of individually as you want, come out on your rows, come around, grab bread, wine, put your cups in there, and then you kind of circle around and go back to your pew. Uh, if you are not comfortable with that, with COVID things and germs, we do have little individual cups in the back that have wine and bread in them uh, that you can use instead. You are so ready for this. This is exciting. Uh, <laughs> another quick word. Uh, it's wonderful to have kids in church. Kids are always kids, which means sometimes they're just noisy, and that's okay, all right? Don't freak out. It's going to be all right. We're still going to love you if your kids are loud. It's okay, okay? Uh, any other announcements this morning? All right. Well, seeing no other announcements, I invite you to take just a few moments before you begin church uh, for prayer. So to ask God to show up in ways we can see and experience today, to pray for the people who are gathered here, to pray for those people who are absent, uh, and to ask for God to be made known to them today. So let's just take a few moments of prayer. I invite you at this time to rise as you so desire. Uh, in Lutheran churches, we begin our service most every Sunday by confessing that we are not perfect people. Uh, and so no one in here is perfect. Uh, and we're also going to hear that 
God chooses to love us anyway. And that as a community gathered together, we're supposed to love one another too in our imperfections. So this is what we do. We confess uh, that we are sinful and we hear that God chooses to love us. So I invite you to hear uh, these words as we do this together today. We begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us now to take just a few moments to confess uh, our sinfulness. So our sin is doing things that harms our relationship with God and harms our relationship with other people. So we typically have this time in church of silence where we confess things to God. Now, uh, it's better for us in terms of relationship with God and with others to be as specific as we can, not just to say, oh, yeah, I know I'm not perfect. And it's better to say, you know, I lost my temper at work this week, or I said things to my spouse I don't that were harmful, or I didn't, I wasn't patient with my kids, or fill in the blank. Because when we are specific, that's when transformation can happen, where we can acknowledge this is not okay, and I need to be something different. God help me. So I invite us now to take just a few moments of silence to do that, to come before God and say. These are the areas that I need to work on. I'm sorry. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. Well, I've got a different one than you guys. <laughs> I'm not perfect either. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Most merciful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I invite you to be seated. Uh, we're going to sing uh, our opening hymn. Uh, if you're one who likes to have like the music notes, you can f grab one of the hymnals in front of you, the little red books. Uh, and our hymns are the large numbers at the top of the page toward the back. Uh, so if you would like to have the, the notes of what we're singing, that's where you can find it. If not, we'll just have the words up on the screen. Here in this place the new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away 
See in this face our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery, we are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bone. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to join me in our prayer of the day. Our Father, give us the perspective to put your kingdom, your will, before our own. Open our eyes to see our selfishness and how we often try to create our own kingdom where we rule. Remind us that it is better having you as our king than if we are rulers ourselves. Give us the courage to make your kingdom known to those we meet. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Going to change venues here so we don't get cricks in our necks here. <laughs> so, our first reading today comes from Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 5 through 15. So, at Concordia here, we're presently in the middle of uh, a sermon series on prayer. So, I invite you to um, be listening for things about prayer today. Matthew 6, verses 5 through 15. Jesus teaches us, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, 
for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 33 and 34. Jesus teaches us, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And our final reading today comes from Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 33, and then verses 44 through 50. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So, as I said, we're kind of working through um, a sermon series on prayer right now. So we're using the Lord's Prayer as our guide in this time. And today is the second sermon in this five-part series. So I'm going to catch you up a little bit about what we talked about last week, so we're kind of roughly on the same page. So the goal of prayer, so the reason why we're told to pray is to achieve two goals. Okay, so the first goal is to build relationship with God. Okay, so we pray to build relationship with God. And the second goal is for ourselves to be transformed. We got a preacher here today. This is great. It's nice to hear your voice too. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So two goals, build relationship with God and for us to be transformed. Uh, these goals is what shape proper prayer. So last week we talked about having the proper perspective when we approach God in prayer. So we begin the Lord's Prayer with, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Maybe these are familiar words, right? Uh, so, just like we begin conversation with other people, we begin maybe by saying their name, right? Getting their attention. Uh, and by doing so, we remember who they are as a person, right? And we might not recognize that that happens, but it does. And the reason, and the way I'll help you understand that is, what happens when someone says your name and you don't recognize them? Anybody? What happens? Panic, right? They know me. I don't remember who they are. Oh, no, they're going to find out that I'm not perfect. Ah! Right? Uh, so it's important for us to remember who people are when we begin conversation with them. And it's the same with God. God wants us to remember who God is, that God isn't just some wish-granting vending machine that we try to punch the right numbers to get what we want. No. God is the one who created everything. God is much bigger than we are. Uh, and God is one who claims us as children and says, I love you. 
So when we begin prayer, it's important for us to remember who God is, to have the proper perspective when we approach God, just like in every other relationship. So that's kind of what we talked about last week. Today we're going to be talking about uh, this kind of the first thing that we actually pray in the Lord's Prayer. So the first thing is we acknowledge God, and then we actually have a request. And the request is, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, this is the first real thing we pray about, and it is the most important. That's why it's the first thing. So we're going to kind of talk about this today. So to understand what Jesus is asking us to pray, we have to define a few things. So we're told to pray about God's kingdom, and we're told to pray about God's will. So I'm going to begin by talking about God's will. So to start, I think it's really important for us to talk about a common Christian concept that I find harmful. The concept is God's plan. Have we heard this before? No, it's not, it's not bad in its entirety, but I think the way we often approach it is unhelpful. Often people make this statement with the idea that God's will is going to be done because everything is part of God's rigid plan, right? There is only one future possible, and it's the one where God's will is done. So the reason why this is harmful is because it's extremely limited, and it removes all responsibility from us, right? Since God's got it all planned, What's the point of me even trying? Have we ever thought that before? If everything's going to happen how God wants it to happen, what is even the point? Is, this, is there even relationship possible like this? Also, this kind of way of thinking about it makes this part of the Lord's Prayer seem pointless. Why pray for God's will to be done when God's plan is simply going to happen without our involvement. If God's will is already going to be done, why are we praying for it? You following me here? Okay, so this, this idea of God's plan being a narrow, only one future happening is unhelpful. So I'm going to try and explain this in a way that is beneficial. So God does have a plan, and that is to bring about the salvation of all creation through Jesus Christ. That's the plan, okay? That's what we hear about in Scripture. But I think, however, uh, we also know and we claim that God knows everything. Have we heard that before? God is omnipotent. He knows all things. So with these two things in mind, I find it interesting that we want to limit God with the idea that there is only one possible future, Right? I think God knows all things that are possible, which means that God knows all possible futures. Not just one, but every future that is, has a possibility of happening. And what that means is that God knows what will happen based on every choice that you make and every choice that I make. God knows what's going to happen if I stop preaching right now. God knows what's going to happen if I preach an extra hour today. Uh, God knows what's going to happen if you skip lunch today. God knows what's going to happen if you choose to love your neighbor or if you choose not to love your neighbor. So this idea that the future is rigid and only one, one possibility is false. God knows the possibility of all futures. So the future isn't this railroad that we have to stay on. It is an ever-branching tree of possibility with the choices that you make and the choices that I make. Okay, so we follow in that concept. The future is ever broadening based on the choices that we make. So, this is why Jesus teaches us to pray, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Because it allows us to participate in making God's future happen. Right? This is the point of God being in relationship with us is so that we can make God's future happen so that God's will is going to be accomplished by the choices that we choose to make. So it's not this rigid thing where we have no, 
no say in what's going to happen. Rather, God says, I'm giving you the opportunity to choose me. And giving you the opportunity to join me in making a future where love is known. Where my will is done and my will is for everyone to be loved and cherished. So this is what we're praying for when we say, thy will be done. We're praying that by the choices I choose to make and the relationship that I have with God, that God's will is going to be done in my life and the choices I make and the relationships I form. And this is, this is how transformation happens in this prayer. Uh, we put God's will before our own. We make God's commands more important than my ideas. We build a future that loves God and loves our neighbors. We make sure, we, we do our best to make sure the future that God loves, the future that God wants, is the one that we are actively bringing into the world by the choices we make. So this leads us to, this, to the discussion about God's kingdom. This other thing we pray about. So a kingdom is a place in which a king rules. A place in which a king has power. Does that make sense? I think that's the easiest definition of a kingdom. Uh, a kingdom is a territory in which a king has authority and control, respect and responsibility. So when we make God's will a priority, when we allow God's commands to shape our lives, we literally create God's kingdom around us. I think sometimes when we pray this, we think we're talking about when Jesus returns. Let your kingdom come quickly. And sure, I mean, that's an okay way of praying it. It's not, it's not like bad. But I think there's a more transformative way for us to pray about this, uh, which is about saying, I want your kingdom to exist in this space I inhabit. Since you are my king, your rules must be important. And so you need to be the ruler of my life. So this is what happens when the space we occupy is a space in which God's will is done. We literally make God's kingdom happen around us. When we pray for God's kingdom to come, it's not about God's future kingdom. It's about praying that the space in which I live will be ruled by God. So this is a, a powerful thing to pray. A powerful way of transformation as well. Because it's not about me building my own kingdom and me amassing my own money and my own power and me, 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 me. Rather, we're encouraged to remember, no, the one I'm talking to in prayer is far greater than I. And this is the one whose will is most important. And the way that God calls me to live is good. And actually better than the way I would choose to live. So we had a, a couple of different stories about God's kingdom in our lessons today that we read. Uh, and so I want to talk about the story about the woman and the yeast. So if you don't remember what that story was, uh, Jesus taught that the kingdom of heaven is like a woman who takes yeast and kneads it into the dough, and all of the dough is leavened, right? So what this is talking about is when we allow God to be the king of our life, God's kingdom becomes present in all areas, right? So this isn't just... Uh, when, when you add yeast to dough, how many, how many of you have made bread before? Anybody? Some people? Okay. So yeast is uh, a mold that you add to bread that allows it to rise. So if you don't add yeast, you're going to have flat bread. Okay? So yeast, we put it into the dough, and it's really, really teeny tiny. Okay? And then we knead it in. And so the question I have to ask you today is, those of you who have baked... And those of you who are recognizing dough is sticky and you just put a whole bunch of tiny little things in it, are you going to be able to get the yeast out of the bread? The answer is there is no chance. Not going to happen. Right? So this idea, uh, and not only that, but when we put yeast in the dough and we mix it in, this itty bitty little bit of yeast spreads throughout the whole bread and the whole loaf rises. It's not like one little bit does. The whole thing. 
So the story about God's kingdom being like yeast that we put into bread is that when we seek after God's kingdom, that's going to spread into all areas of your life. It's not just an hour on a Sunday morning when you come to church. It is how you choose to interact with everyone in your life. That's well, how we know God's kingdom has come is when it's not just in these little pockets in our life, but it's spread throughout all the decisions that we choose to make. And it's something that can't be removed. The dough is transformed by the yeast. It's different than it once was, and it can't go back to how it used to be. This is how we are called to be transformed as people who live in God's kingdom, this new life, different than we once were. So this section of the Lord's Prayer is a powerful prayer of transformation. It's a powerful prayer to build relationship with God. The section reminds us of whose will and whose kingdom is the most important. It changes our perspective to see that God's kingdom and God's will is the most important, not my own. It reminds us that we have a responsibility and an opportunity to make God's kingdom known around us. It reminds us that God invites us into creating a future that will please God, will honor God, and will allow God's kingdom to take shape around us. I'm almost done. I promise we're so close. You're doing so well. We're getting there. We're getting there. So this is, this is what I want you to come away with today, is that when we pray God's kingdom come God's will be done. It is a powerful prayer of transformation. It is a way that we're called to perceive the world. And God invites us into building God's kingdom and making God's will happen around us. And this is a beautiful opportunity for us. Amen. So we're going to sing another song here. It's hymn number 641. So, uh, since we've been talking about God's will and God's kingdom, we're going to sing a song that's about that. Uh, so this song uh, is about how, how we can make God's kingdom happen. So it's a song called All Are Welcome. It's a song about who is welcome in this place. But every uh, verse of this song begins with uh, a statement that says, Let us build. Let us build a house where these things happen. Let us make this our priority, which is essentially saying, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let us build this so this happens. And I'm pretty sure my guitar isn't going through the sound system, so I'm going to put a new battery in it quick. So as we sing this song, I invite you to try to identify the ways that you can see if we lived in this way, that God's will would happen and that God's kingdom would come. Let's see, is it coming through? Oh, that's better, okay. where love can dwell and all can safely live a place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive built of hopes and dreams and visions rock of faith and vault of grace here the love of christ shall end divisions all are welcome all are Let 
us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace here as one we claim the faith of Jesus all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place let us build a house where love is found in water wine and wheat a banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet here the love of god through jesus is revealed in time and space as we share in christ the feast that frees us all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen serve and teach and live the word they've known hear the outcast and the stranger they're the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard. house proclaimed from floor to rafter all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place amen <laughs> i'll take it So at this time, we are going to have our prayers of intercession. So this is a time in our church service where we kind of have this prayer in the Lord's Prayer of give us this day our daily bread, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks, but I'll give you the short end of it. Uh, we're asking for God to give us what we need to survive. So during prayers of intercession, that's pretty much what we're praying for. Give us what we need to survive. Strengthen us in our faith. Uh, Give us what we need for our creation. Be with our government leaders around the world. Give us what we need for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. So I invite you at this time into a, uh, some time of prayer. Let's pray. God, I give you thanks for this gathered people here and all those who gather together in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that your kingdom will come around us, that your will will be done, that the choices we make will glorify you and will build our relationship with you and with other people. Give us this strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your good creation. Lord, we pray for all those who are harvesting at this time. Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe. Lord, we ask that you would prevent fires. Lord, we also pray for all those who are in need of hay. Lord, we ask that you would provide what they need. Help them to survive. Lord, we also pray for all areas around the world that are suffering from uh, fires or drought or floods or famine. Lord, we ask that you would provide what they need. Open our eyes to see their needs and recognize we might be able to do something to help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for this government of the United States and all others who lead. Lord, we ask that those who are in leadership positions would strive to do your will and make your kingdom come 
that love may abound by the policies put in place. Give them your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray this day for all those who are hungry, all those who are poor, those who are oppressed, those who are grieving, those who are lonely. Lord, we ask that you would provide what they need. Lord, we also ask that you would open our eyes to see that we might be ones to make God's kingdom come and your will be done in their lives. That we might stretch out our hands in love and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray this day for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Especially this day, we lift up all those on our prayer sheet and all those that we name now either silently or aloud. Braylon in her baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for giving to us people to know and to love. Lord, we also give you thanks that in the face of death, you make the promise that we will meet them once again. That relationship has not ended, but has just delayed. Lord, I ask that you would comfort all those who grieve. and Help us remember that your love has conquered death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so at this time, I would invite uh, Bray Lynn and her parents and sponsors to come on up. Oh, you're shy, huh? You want to be in front of everybody? You're going to do great. Also, at this time... Uh, the family is okay with this, that if there are any kids in church that want to come up here and kind of see what we're doing around the baptismal font, you're welcome to come up here if you'd like to. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. Come on up here. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to tell some stories up here about baptism and why this is important, and we're going to have some fun, okay? God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents Braylon for baptism? Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Braylon baptized into Christ? Perfect. As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you, parents, are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Braylon may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, Care for others in the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Braylon grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors. Do you promise to nurture Braylon in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Wonderful. People of God gathered here this day, you have responsibilities too. Do you promise to support Braylon and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, say we do. Excellent. I ask us all at this time to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, 
and confess the faith of the church. So we're going to do this thing here where I'm going to ask you to renounce things. To renounce things means I want nothing to do with these things. So in light of what I preached about today, this is also saying these things are opposed to God's kingdom and God's will. I want nothing to do with them. I want your will to be done and your kingdom to come. So that's kind of what we're saying together as a community, that this is important to us. So I ask you, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So quick note, maybe we say that we believe in the Holy Catholic Church, and some of you might go, but we're Lutheran. Uh, the word Catholic means universal. So it's got a little C there, uh, which includes our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. We're talking about, I believe that the Holy Spirit is active in all denominations of those who follow Jesus Christ. So it's saying the universal church is what we believe in. So if that's a hiccup for you, you don't have to worry. Um, it's good news there. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Okay, so kids, if you want to stand up on the stools here, we're going to be pouring water into the basin. So you can kind of see what we're doing here. You want to stand up on the step over there? You can stand up on the step over there so, so you can see. There you go. Can you see up in here? Yeah? Okay. Now we're going to tell some stories about how God has done cool things with water in the Bible. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took to light. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, Braylon, it's showtime. Are you ready? This is going to be great. Oh, hi. Hi. It's nice to see you. Oh. Thanks, sweetheart. You're okay, I promise. It's going to be all right. Braylon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, 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 we made it. Oh, we made it. Oh, 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 get it out of your eyes there. Oh, yeah, that guy's kind of mean, isn't he? Oh, he's so mean. Oh, it's okay. You did really good. You did really well, yeah. Yeah, babies don't usually like having water dumped on their head. You're right, daughter. You got it. All right. Let's all say this here. 
Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Braylon with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Braylon, child of God. This guy again, this guy again. Braylon, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Jesus teaches us, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and, get, and glorify your Father in heaven. This is our hope for you, Braylon, that your light would shine and that others would know of God's love through you. I'll let you hold on to that for now. Let us welcome Braylon, the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. So something we do here at Concordia, if Braylon's going to let me, we'll see. I don't know, we had a rough go of it here. We are going to go sing a song. Do you want to come with me and sing a song? We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. And we'll let the people in the back see Braylon. Oh no, this guy again. Let's sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Yeah, this is way better than water, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we can blow that out. Do you want to blow it out? Ooh, good job. Okay, so... We have some gifts for you all. Got a certificate. We have a, a kid's Bible to help you along with these promises you've made to teach her about Jesus and God's love for her. And we have a quilt. Can you hold her quilt for her? Can you do that? This is a quilt for her and, and our quilters made that and they want your sister to know that she is wrapped in God's love every time she curls up in that. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, and we also have a, you see there's a little cross in there? That's made by our uh, yarn whispers at the church here. And that's a gift for your sister because I got an owie on my hand. That's why we have bandages. Good question. Yeah. You're welcome. And you guys can sit sit down if you'd like. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good place to sit. You're welcome. So I invite you to share signs of peace with one another at this time. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. We've just been kind of waving at each other, so we can do a quick wave. God loves you. It's nice to see you all. Peace be with you. <laughs> we, we aren't passing our offering plates around either at this time. We just kind of have a sitting on the back table there in the narthex, which is that space back there. 
So if you'd like to give an offering, that's a place for it. If you already have, thank you for supporting the ministry here. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. So I invite you at this time to hear the story of why we share this meal of communion and what it's supposed to mean for us. So in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is now ready, and all are welcome to have communion in this place. Uh, Since we have the baptismal font up here, As you come around, I invite you, you can dip your fingers in the waters there, and you can make the sign of the cross on your forehead and remember that God's love is for you. If you have neighbors in line that you think need to be reminded of this truth, uh, you can dip your fingers in and splash them lovingly uh, with the waters of baptism. So uh, as you come forward, you can do that, uh, and then I'm going to ask my helpers to come up, and we'll use some hand sanitizer, and then we'll have communion. I also have gluten-free wafers. If you need it, just let me know. Uh, Also, kids are welcome to have this. It's up to your parents whether they want them to have it. So we'll leave that up to you all.
And if there are those who have the individual ones, I invite you to take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed out of love for you. Please take and drink. If you notice, we do this kind of juggling act at the end here. Uh, and the reason the pastor doesn't just take, take the wine and the bread for themselves is that this is a gift that Jesus has freely given to us. So it's something that's meant to be given, not something that we take. So that's why we do this fun little, everybody gets to give someone else uh, this meal. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you peace. Amen. We've got our sending song number 551. I invite you to join in singing. This is a song about being sent out of this place to go and make God's kingdom come. So I invite you to Ponder the words as we sing this song. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name. To bring glad tidings to the poor, God's favor to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free. Where hope is dim to share a dream and help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ, to scatter joy like sea, and all our days to cherish life, to do the loving deed. Then let us go to serve in peace, the gospel to proclaim. God's Spirit has empowered us, we go in Jesus' name. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's some coffee and treats in the back if you want to stick around and fellowship. Uh, if not, I hope you have a wonderful week. It's nice to see you all.